Welcome back, Akira Bike Project fans. We left off the last video making the large sprocket mount in the engine reduction cage and cutting the shaft keyways into the bevel gears. In this video, we're going to make the bearing mounts, mount the large sprocket and bevel gears, and mount that output shaft and fit test it. Currently, these bearing mounting plates are just clamped to the engine reduction cage frame. It demonstrates the setup pretty well though, and looks pretty good. I started out by cutting the upper and lower mounting brackets on my plasma cutter, mounted on my CNC router. These were cut out of quarter inch thick steel plate. These are then sanded and cleaned, and then soaked in muriatic acid to remove the mill scale. I marked the bracket mounts with blue marking dye, center punched the holes, and then drilled and tapped them. There. So these screws, when moved, will change the angle this way and that way, but there's three of them instead of four. So for any three non-collinear points, there's only one plane that defines them. So for example, you pull this one up and you're going to change the rotation, the, the plane that the bearing is mounted that way, or push it down, or both of these can go down. Um, so you have a lot of uh, flexibility with this, and there's going to be two screws here to slide this thing this way and that way. And these will have grooves that the screws float around in. All right, so the next step is to cut those grooves into this bearing mounting plate and set the whole thing up. Okay, just to show how these bearing mount brackets work and go together, uh, this is a typical fixed bearing mount bracket. There's a hole in here that equals the outside diameter of the bearing. Um, these are just laser cut from quarter inch plate, uh, but instead of going through the complicated process of milling a thicker plate, into a uh, bearing housing that completely fits these. I decided to put these together by laser cutting from parts from Sin Cut Sin and stacking these aluminum washers over this bearing mounting plate captures the bearing. So let me show you how that goes together. So this is the bearing, fits inside there. The aluminum plates with the larger inner diameter go on first. And then the ones with the smaller go on second, and they're the ones that hold the bearing in place. These locking screws go in and just push them through, flip it over, and repeat the process. So there we have a bearing that's captured in housing that didn't need to have any complicated 3D milling done on it. The part of the housing that's taking the least stress is done with this lightweight aluminum. Um, so I think that's a little bit better of a design too. The downside is you have to do a little bit of assembly. Fit testing that looked pretty good, so I'll go ahead and cut the grooves in the plates. I went ahead and marked the plates and cut the grooves out on my small milling machine. The result came out looking pretty good. And fit testing it with the bolts, washers, and adjustment nuts installed, and the brackets clamped to the cage also looked good. The reason for this adjustability is that the bevel gears require quite precise alignment to ensure a decent amount of efficiency. Normally the right bearing recesses would probably be machined at right angles into a cast steel housing. But that's outside my fabrication capacity at the moment, so I'll go with these adjustable brackets. I went ahead and made these brackets for this side of the large sprocket large bevel gear shaft and then tested it out with the chain and my drill. The other side of that large sprocket shaft didn't need to be adjustable because the bearing has some play and the shaft is long enough that any misalignment can be handled by the other side bearing 
and the adjustability of the output shaft. So it was just lined up and then marked and then cut. And then on the back side, two small pieces of angle iron were welded to it and those would be welded to the frame after lining it up again. With that, I could move on to finishing the framing of the engine redux cage to get ready to mount the output shaft. I jigged up two more layers of the engine redux cage frame and individually tack welded each layer together and then fit tested the whole thing in the bike. That was looking pretty good, so I went ahead and did a quick fit test with the output shaft as well, but without the large bevel gear. I was happy with that, so I tried it again, but with the bevel gear. Nice. Looking good. That was looking very good. Well, I was quite satisfied with that and thought it was good enough to move forward. I added a bunch more clamps and plates and 1-2-3 blocks to prep it for welding, and then went ahead and tack welded these two additional layers in. I was originally just going to weld these bearing plate mounts to the engine reduction cage frame, here above and below the large bevel gear, but this would mean I could not actually remove the large sprocket to large bevel gear shaft or make modifications or change the sprocket size without cutting and welding. So I would go ahead and alter these bearing plate mounts to be removable. I extended the length of the mount plates by welding extensions to them or fabricating larger ones, and then these would either be bolted to the frame, or in the case of the upper one, bolted to a small bracket that was welded to the frame. And the result looks something like this. Fit testing the new mount setup looks pretty good. That lower extended bracket was originally going to have an angle iron mount like the upper one here, but it turned out that it would bump up against the motorcycle frame, and there was room enough down there to drill two holes into the engine redux cage frame directly. I tossed the whole thing in the milling machine to drill the vertical adjustment bolt holes, while the engine reduction cage was out of the bike, I went ahead and worked on the chain tensioner. This is a mostly stock chain tensioner you can buy online. I did need to reduce the height of one of the sides though, and flip the arm around so it's reversed. But it looked like it was going to work great, so I went ahead and tack welded it in. Giving it a quick little test, worked great. It did overcome the tension of the temporary spring I was using though. I had to try it out then with the small bevel gear in the output shaft to see what it would look like. I was pretty excited at how cool this was looking, until I realized that my chain tensioner was on the wrong side. They do need to be on the return side of the chain and not the driven side of the chain. That's a problem I'll fix later. Moving on then to the output shaft. The axis of these two shafts turned out to be lower than I expected in my design. So my bearing mount plates were too short, even with the adjustability. So I remade these with a send cut send order, and also updated the design a little to shave off some weight. The mounting brackets for the bearing plates were also too short, so I would need to remake those as well. Over on the small bevel gear side of the output shaft, the bearing plate mounting bracket is tall and has a steep angle cut into it. This is because this side of the engine reduction cage sticks out further to accommodate the large sprocket, but is also angled to accommodate the lean angle of the motorcycle. Lacking a vertical metal cutting bandsaw, I tried cutting these with the handheld bandsaw. A little bit of a struggle, but it worked okay. I jigged it up and it looked good, so I went ahead and tack welded the upper and lower bearing plate mounting brackets on either ends, but not the middle ones, as the primary adjustability is going to be handled by these end plates. Okay, I just tack welded here, 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 and here. I'm going to take all the excess out so I can give these things a better tack weld on the other side. It's still all going to be just tack weld.
Some of these bolts and fixtures are getting difficult to get to, and I've started a small collection of custom tools for this bike, including this stubby little 7 16th inch wrench that's also been ground to be much narrower than usual. Picks come in really handy turning these jam nuts and getting them in place. I'm hoping these jam nuts with some Loctite will be sufficient to hold with the forces on the drive shaft bearings. If not though, I figure I can get them into the best position possible and then just weld everything down if necessary. It's a bit of a surgical like procedure to get these things in and out, but it's okay and can be done with a little bit of practice. All right, I got all the connecting junk nuts out. And she just pulled right out. There we go. Yep. Not bad. Now I get to clamp these down, give them another weld. Let's do another test fit before we tack weld these things. And it looks good. And here we go with all of the output shaft bearing mount plate brackets welded in place. Tack welded at least. And finally I want to check it out and see how it works in the bike. Man, that is something else. I'm getting really thrilled with the progress here. Well, that is it for this episode. Thank you. I'd like to thank my patrons for supporting this project, as always. And I want to welcome two new patrons, Baruki and Farad. Thank you for your support of this project. I really appreciate it. Every bit contributed here helps bring this revolutionary motorcycle concept to life. I'm aiming to take advantage of all the potential the recumbent platform has to offer. Do justice to the vision laid out by Otomo and other designers and catapult a new popular motorcycle platform into mainstream use. Thank you for traveling this journey with me. If you like this project, please become a patron today.